All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about Veristalica's Yakari Puko. Now, this is by no means a new knife, but it's still pretty unheard of, especially nowadays. It definitely blew up in around 2018. A lot of people knew it, liked it, bought it back then, but I recently got mine and uh, I thought it would be worth talking about and honestly doing a competitive offerings breakdown, kind of talking about four other knives that are very similar in price, materials, construction, size, on and on and talking about them versus the Veristalica. Now, kind of briefly summarizing this knife and going over it, you have a nice high Scandinavian grind. It is of course a full tang piece of ADCRV2, which for the price point is a decent steel. I've talked about it before, it's pros and cons. Um, and of course this has a rubberized bolter on handle. And so it is a decent handle. It is going to stay pretty temperature neutral in Arctic environments. And overall, it's a pretty decent knife. Now, now the prices on these kind of vary because you can get smaller and larger versions. This is the 140 millimeter version. So it's about a five inch overall length or blade length, I should say. Um, and so they do make smaller versions that are slightly cheaper. But for the price point, this one's about 80 to or 60 to 80 dollars depending on what sheath options you get so if you get it with just a typical sheath it's gonna be about an 80 dollar knife now the biggest disadvantage to this knife i will say that a lot of the other knives that we're talking about don't have is that unfortunately for Celica, they kind of rounded off the spine as you guys can see here and so on both sides it's kind of uh, chamfered at a 45 degree angle meaning that the um, spine is not able to strike ferro rods effectively so it's a little bit of an unfortunate part but outside of that this knife actually does offer I think in my opinion a pretty decent value but let's take a look at some other competitive options now the first one up in my opinion the most competitive the most like honestly competitive option would be the cold steel srk it is slightly larger especially in the handle but of course the blade length is also larger so you guys can see here hopefully trying to get them in frame there is both of the knives side to side and the srk here is in cpm 3v now if you know where to go you can pretty regularly find these on sale for about a hundred dollars to 99 dollars. so overall a sub 100 or right around a hundred dollar um, knife for being made out of cpm 3v is pretty unbeatable and so for me i would say this is probably its strongest competitor because the blade steel is better it's a larger overall package and the handle on the cold steels in my opinion like every knife we're looking at here has a rubberized handle but cold steel has some of in my opinion the best rubberized handles they are super tacky and very grippy whereas the bolteron on the veristalica is still very grippy but not quite as grippy in addition to it's worth noting you see on the cold steel how it has a textured pattern whereas on the veristalica yukari puko it is just the plain bolteron. So it is grippy, but not as grippy. Now, the next one that I have to talk about naturally, kind of being a close relative to the Cold Steel SRK is going to be the Demco um, Free Rain. Now, Demco's Free Rain is made in the same factory as the Cold Steel's, SR, or Cold Steel's SRK. So the materials are very similar. The rubber is just as grippy. It's just a different design and a different um, blade material. So this is OS 10A. You can also get these in um, Magna Cut, which are also very nice. Now, the Free Rain is probably the most, maybe not the most expensive, but it is definitely not as cheap. They come in around $120, the Free Rains, but they definitely have, in my opinion, better ergonomics. And once again, you're seeing a slightly thicker blade steel. Now, like I said, it is a um, slightly shorter knife. It's slightly smaller than the Veristalica, but it is by no means a bad knife. Um, overall, the free reign is pretty cool in its own right. Now, if I had to choose, I'd probably still pick the Akari Puko over the free reign, but it is definitely a close one. All right, now to, on to probably the closest cousin to the Akari Puko, that is the Falkneven S1. Now, the S1 is very similar in functional blade handle length and blade length, or sorry, handle length and blade length overall length these guys are pretty similar the biggest difference between these two is that unfortunately the falcon even is about double the price now this is a falcon even s1 this is the smaller version they make an a1 um, that is larger but the s1 is 
you know, just a little bit smaller, but is the closest in size comparison. Now, as you can see, the Falcon even is definitely more of a you know, design blade, like it has a swedge on it. It has a convex ground um, VG10 triple layer laminate steel. So it definitely has some advantages in that regard. I will say both of them actually have very similar handles in grip. Of course, the Falk even is just a little bit better because it does have a little bit of that diamond texturing going on, but uh, both are full tang and uh, very, very similar knives here. But like I said, your primary differences are gonna be your blade steel. You are using a triple layer laminate VG10, using a convex grind on it. So maybe some higher performance, but it all adds up to a very expensive end product because it is a very finished blade. And so it's finished, it's nice. The uh, Falcon is definitely a nice looking knife, but it is also, I said, double the price of the Yakari Puko. And so that's part of what makes this Yakari Puko such a nice option is, you know, it's definitely rougher around the edges. It has, you know, an unfinished kind of blade, uh, blade sides to it. But what's important is finished and uh, it is a functional knife. Now, the last one up is going to be the Gerber Strong Arm. Now, the Gerber Strong Arm is one that I don't typically like, and once again, I definitely take the Veris Chalaika um, Yakari Puko over the Gerber Strong Arm, not only because the uh, Yakari Puko is bigger um, and just offers you a little bit more performance, but you guys can see here like interesting things about the uh, Gerber Strong Arm. This is a factory unused Gerber Strong Arm, and you can see how much of this blade is not sharpened. Like, it's already a smaller blade length, but it's a much smaller cutting edge because there's a good you know half inch right here that is just so definitely do not love that about this knife um, the handles I will say the rubber portions on the Gerber are definitely more grippy and more tacky than the Bolteron, but not by a significant portion. Um, unfortunately, one area where the Gerber strong arm is better and once again this is very frustrating is that it is actually um, sharp on the spine so you can strike a ferro rod with it. So it's very frustrating. All of the other knives we talked about here, you can indeed strike a ferrocerium rod off of the spine um, of them, whereas on the Yakari Puko, you cannot. So that is very frustrating to me, in my opinion, but the Yakari Puko does offer some good value. Now, um, once again, the Gerber Strong Arm is probably the closest in price. These come in at about $80. This one here was, I want to say $89. So basically $90, very similar to the Cold Steel SRK and CPM 3V, but right around the price of the Taravi Yakari Puko. This is definitely the cheapest of them all, but uh, not by necessarily a wide margin. Now, um, what do I think? Honestly, the probably the one knife here, if I was given, you know, like a choice between them, if I had to like purchase them, um, the one knife I would choose over the Akari Puko is probably the Cold Steel SRK. And that is in CPM 3V. Um, and that is just because overall, I like the blade shape. I like the amount of finish on this knife because it's important to note, you know, like this is a little bit more finished. Once again, you see like that, you know, uh, swedge on it. You see that this knife is, you know, not as um, down and dirty, rough and tumble. Some people like that kind of finish. I just like that this knife is a little bit more finished and I really do just absolutely love that grip on this knife. Not only is the SRK more hand filling, but it just feels a lot more tacky in the hand. And I think that's a really important thing, especially when your hands are gloved or when you're wearing mittens, to have an extra amount of grip in there. So for me, I would probably choose the Cold Steel SRK um, over the Tarabi Yakari Puko, but when it comes to things like the Demko Free Rain, the Falcon Even S1, the Gerber Strong Arm, I'd probably choose the Yakari Puko over all of those, especially the Gerber Strong Arm and probably the Free Rain. Um, the Falcon Even is very similar. It is a very similar knife. Um, the only thing that I like about the uh, Falcon even like definitively over the Yakari Puko is that it has a much better spine. It's a little bit thicker in the blade stock and once again, it's a little bit more finished. So there's a, there's a handful of things that the uh, Falcon even does better, but once again, does it really justify twice the price? I personally don't think so. So I've done videos why I actually don't like Falcon evens and this kind of helps further cement that, that, you know, like you're looking at, you know, a very finished product here, but realistically speaking, when it comes to actually using the knife as a cutting instrument, um, 
like this this Tarava is half the price and uh, does just like literally the same thing. So in my opinion, uh, you know, it's not even like a just as good kind of thing. It's literally, it's doing the same thing. So the Verisilica might be a little bit more prone to rust because it doesn't have the fancy triple layer laminate, you know, VG10, but also the Taravi Yukari Puko is gonna be less likely to chipping out and breaking um, or that edge breaking due to the fact that it has a high carbon alloy steel. So anyways, guys, that's enough of rambling, but that is the Yukari Puko kind of broken down some competitive options and uh, what I would choose. But the Akari Buko is a very solid option when you look at survival knives as a whole. Um, yeah, so that's really all I have to say, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.